told you guys at some point I would do more impressions. I can can I give you a little Jim Carrey? Can I, can I do it? Can I do it? You can't stop me no matter who you are. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if it took 10 games. I don't care if it took 20 games. The Montreal Canadiens beat the Boston Bruins for the first time in 10 games. That one feels good. That one feels really good. You know it does. Enjoy it. Let's enjoy it together. Shall we? Alrighty then. Okay. Wonderful. Folks, this is a fun game. This is this is the this is exactly the kind of game that I expected out of the Montreal Canadiens to show up against one of the top teams in the league, one of their biggest rivals, their biggest rival in the Boston Bruins, and do that. Do that. We had we, we had Jack I just throwing the body in the game. We had Pez throwing the body. We had Slavkovsky throwing hits in the game. You know what? Very impressed with Slavkovsky's back check. At one point in this game, when he was trying to create him and Cole Caulfield are working on some chemistry. I like that they split up Nick and Cole. Some of you guys mentioned that in the pregame video. By the way, I know that Milan Lucic, I know that Milan Lucic is injured now. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Um, only about 700 of you guys reminded me, even though I put it in the title in the pregame that Jack, I might fight Lucic. By the way, they didn't fight, guys, because Lucic is hurt. He's hurt emotionally from nine years ago, and Deal Weiss just destroyed him and the Bruins. It's fine. He'll get over it eventually. Someday. Maybe not. Anyways, back to this game tonight. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. By the way, I'm fired up. I'm excited. Uh, this was a much-needed win for the Canes. They deserved it. Offensively, they, uh, they were all over it tonight in terms of just um, creating more chances than... I don't know. They're they're building some momentum. It seems in in some way with their offensive game, and uh, let's let's talk about some specifics in this game. We're going to talk about the Sam Montembeau contract extension that is in the works. Apparently, according to Elliot Friedman, we'll get to that in a minute. My friend Sam Montembeau. This is my friend Sam. Hey, what's up? I know we just met. But... <laughs> We're still friends. Good game, man. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot, buddy. All right, we'll see you. That's my friend. That's my friend Sam. He said Sam Montembeau said I was his friend. Don't get mad at me, guys. All right, now. Let's talk about this game in more detail. The Bruins opened the scoring pretty early in this game. And by pretty early, I mean, okay, how many seconds into the game? 36 seconds. Yes, Pavel Zaka with his fifth goal pretty quick in the first period. No scoring in the second period. But the game was entertaining overall. I mean, that's the third period. I don't know what it is. The third period are the best periods that the Montreal Canadiens are putting together. I want to tell you something else. I want to tell you all the statistical categories, at least according to Sportsnet, that the Canadians actually out, they well, they, they won in each of these categories. Shots on goal, Boston did win that one, 20-27. Montreal out, hit the Bruins 27-14. to They won, the Canadians won 23 face-off to, to Boston's 19. They both went one for four in the power play. Montreal's power play, are you still wanting to fire Alex, Alex Burroughs? Give him some credit. Give him some credit, okay? We were all yelling at Burroughs. We are all yelling at him, giving a hard time. Give him some credit. He deserves it, okay? Thank you. And... Penalty minutes, even eight minutes apiece. Montreal had 22 giveaways. Boston had 15. Montreal had eight takeaways to Boston's five. And Montreal blocked 18 shots to Boston's 17. Let's throw out some stats because why not? Why, what, what, what can Steve be the only one that says why not around here? Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> one taker. We're going to go with the one taker tonight, guys. Okay. Back to the game. The five on three that the Canadians killed off in that third period was just pure heart, grit, determination. Caden Gooley ends up being the second. Was he the first? He was the first star in this game for the love of frig. Oh, no, it was Sam Montembeau. <laughs> I lied. But Caden Gooley was the third star in this game. He makes a huge block on the five-on-three the Canadians had to kill off when a double penalty was given, which is very rare, to Brendan Gallagher. And uh, who was the other one? Let's find out really quickly. It's got to be listed here. Tanner Pearson got the last penalty of the game, but was it It was New Hook and Brendan Gallagher went off together, both for hooking. I, I, just wild. Anyways, Gouley and Kovacevic, two huge block shots. The Bruins had a five on three in the third period, and the Canadians were able to kill it off. That was amazing. So defensively sound, the way Marty's got this team playing, smart without the puck first, and then you turn it over and you create offense, right? And that's what they did. But they, to kill that off, to kill that off was absolutely massive. And it just really helped give the Canes the confidence they needed. I, I knew the Bruins were going to be hard to finish off, and the Habs were able to do it in the end, but the penalty kill came through in a massive way. How many apologies 
do we owe to Brendan Gallagher right now? I tweeted it out earlier tonight. Yep. We all go, oh, Galley, a bit of an apology. I said before this game, these are the games. Brendan Gallagher plays really, really well against the Boston Bruins. He plays really well against the Buffalo Sabres, specifically in their ranks. But in a game like tonight, I expected this kind of performance from Brendan Gallagher. Just the the Caden Gooley shot, Galley knocks it down and just swipes it in on Swayman. And he had some words for Swayman at the end of the game. You okay, Jeremy? You okay? You still smiling? You're not smiling. You're not. Yeah, be quiet. So Brendan Gallagher, absolutely just doing Brendan Gallagher things and, you know, really bringing the love back for him that he really deserved. And all that talk about him is quieting down as he performs as well as he is, right? So just hats off to Galley. Just just a huge performance, huge performance from him against the rival Boston Bruins. He knows when to get up for what games. And he's been getting up for a lot of games lately, right? That, that was his fifth goal of the season. Fifth goal for Brendan Gallagher. Nick Suzuki, fourth game in a row with a goal. Nick Suzuki's sixth goal tonight. He started the third period with the first goal, and then Galley scored right afterwards. How many seconds apart were they? 27? So, like, my goodness, uh, you know, the third period has been a gift, a godsend to the Canadians this season. They have just played their best hockey, it seems, in the first in the third period. Um, we had a Bruins goal waved off in the third period, too, for goaltender interference because he interfered with Sammy's blocker. You can't do that. You can't do that. No goal. Thanks for coming out. Chris Lee was the referee in this game, by the way. So the fact that we were able to get it, I'm not going to blame it on Chris Lee, but he had a not so friendly interaction with Brendan Gallagher a couple couple years ago or less, as we know, but that's in the past. Josh Anderson. All right. I tell you what, when Josh Anderson scores, I'm going to jump out of my chair. I'm going to jump. I'm going to, I'm going to jump for joy in some fashion because when that guy finally scores, I'm going to be super happy for him because Josh Anderson got Anderson got robbed tonight. Uh, on a sweet Nick Suzuki dish. He had another good game overall. He was using that speed effectively. He knows how to wheel and deal around the zone and created opportunities, helped create the overtime winner for Caden Gooley. Alex Newhook first carries the puck in with speed. Him and Anderson both drive the net. Andy winds in, gets a little backhand on net. The puck squirts out to a Bruins defender. He gets it to Gaden Gooley. Thank you for the assist, Boston. And Gooley buries it for the overtime winner to ice this game and ice the Bruins put them back in their place. Brad Marchand got an unsportsmanlike penalty in this game. That was fun to see, Brad. You're still a little upset. Oh, Brad. It's going to be a great. It's going to be okay, Bradley. It's going to be okay, Bradley. You're going to be fine. Ab. Never mind. I don't swear. I was going to say frig. Not even going to say that. Not even going to say that. Okay. So <laughs> the Canadians are right back at it against the Vancouver Canucks tomorrow night. When you're watching this, it probably already is today. So they have a back-to-back against the Canucks who are coming off a 5-2 loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Jake Allen very likely going to get the start unless they are just going to go with the confidence that Caden Primo's riding riding right now. And uh, we'll see, but we're definitely going to see most likely Jake Allen, I would think. But they might throw Caden in there. I I would be surprised if they did. Jake's had some good rest. He needs to bounce back from being pulled the other night against Tampa. Jake Allen's going to be in the net for the Montreal Canadiens against Vancouver. You can just bet on that. And Samuel Montembeau, according to Elliot Friedman, talks, contract talks, extension is in the works for Sam Montembeau. How would you guys like Sammy in this game? Did we even talk about him? I don't think we really did. But he was steady. He was solid. A 929 save percentage for Sam Montembeau in this game. 929, 26 saves. And he made some big he made some big ones. And he's really showing how poised and steady he is. You know, it's a great story. It's a great story for the Canadians. And uh hats off to him. There's probably more I could talk about that I missed in this game, but the fact is the Canadians beat the Boston Bruins for the first time in 10 games. And this is just a great building block again for these rebuilding Canadians, missing Kirby Doc for the season, missing David Savard right now. And missing what a lot of folks would admit, some top-end talent. But guess what? Our guys are starting to show up more and more. The chemistry is being solidified more and more. Raphael, Raphael Harvey-Pinard drew, drew back into the lineup tonight. Um, just a solid contributor on the fourth line again. And uh, defensively sound, the Montreal Canadiens, every one of them. Mike Matheson. Can we talk about Mike Matheson for a second, too? I, that's my twin brother. I put that out there for you, my viewer, who actually mentioned that today, that we do look quite alike. Yes, we do. We're also born from the same town in Quebec. However, Mike Matheson created for himself a breakaway opportunity in overtime and almost ended the game on his own. Okay, that would have been beautiful. Regardless, we got the win anyway. But 
they're changing it up on the power play a little bit with Mike Matheson. He's starting to just bring the puck in on his own. He's doing the carry and he's not just doing the slingshot past Nick Suzuki. And it's working. Like it's working, man. Let Matthew bring it in. Let him carry it in himself. He can do it. He got a friggin' Gordy Howe goal end to end carrying it in himself on the power play less than two weeks ago. So let Matheson keep being Matheson. We need him to stay healthy. Okay. Anyway, that's all I got you guys. This was a longer video than I expected, but it was a fantastic game. You know, you felt good about it. You know, you enjoyed it. Share the love and energy, share that passion with me down below in the comments. I love y'all go Habs go right back at it against Vancouver tomorrow night. Let's do it. We're going to the playoffs. Okay. I, I, I exaggerated there. I know, but, you got to feel good. You got to feel good about it. I don't know about you, but I feel good.